Hi, this is Justice. In this fourth video, we're going to be talking about shape. Now in the brush creator, there is the max size right here, there is max loading, and max smudge. The three of these items are limiters. That means this is the maximum available. Over here in oils and acrylics, you can see size and loading, and you can see size over here and over here. So the max size right here, let's leave this at 300, and we're going to bring this all the way up to 100. I'm going to draw straight across. So this is 100% of this 300 pixel brush maximum size. Let's bring this down to 50%. And let's bring this up to 600. Now what you're going to notice is that this is not one for one because the different media have uh, an algorithm underneath that adjusts the size based off of the type of media it is. So a pencil is always going to be smaller than a watercolor brush or an acrylic brush. Don't be confused if this doesn't translate one for one. If you're using basic math to try and figure out how to get this size to a specific spot, just adjust the size over here. And then if you want it to be larger, adjust this to the right. If you want it to be smaller, adjust it here and that'll constrain it. All right, let's clear the layer. Now, when we're looking at spacing, what this number right here is, this is how much overlap exists between the images. These images are your shape and grain that we see right up here and right here. So notice around this circle, there's a little bit of a black border. So when we go down here, if we adjust this to 100 and we draw across, you're going to notice that that little black border exists on both sides here. These are not overlapping. Now, if I bring this over here to roughly 50%, I'm going to drop the opacity to 50% so we can see this a little bit more clearly. And what you can see is these images are overlapping about 50%. If we bring this over here, you'll see that they're overlapping about 75% or all but 24%. And right here, when we start getting lower, we start to see this really smooth blend of the images. So let's go ahead and we're going to clear this layer. If you put this at one, it's going to be more processor intensive. That means it's going to use a lot more of your system resources to do this. So you can bring this up and choose smudge. What that's gonna do is it's gonna blend them together to create a smoother brush. You can bring this here to roughly 25, and we can get a really nice smooth brush with smudge turned on, with it turned off, you're gonna see that there's not any of that blending. Now glaze is going to keep the transparency from stacking. So you can see here, the transparency remains the same. The second pass, let's turn this back on, the second pass over the top, is going to stack that transparency, but every individual stroke is going to have the same transparency through the entire stroke. I really like this feature. I use it for shadows all the time. It allows you to go over the top of line work uh, without destroying it and leaves a beautiful shadow. All right, let's turn that off. To demonstrate smudge quick strokes, we're over here in oils and acrylics, and I'm using the flat brush. Right here, we're going to do a slow and then a quick. And what you're going to notice here is the grain from the shape and grain here at the top. You can see how it still exists. And down here in the quick stroke version, you can see that this has been blended. So let's do that same thing. You can see the difference between these. This is smudgy, this is not. Now there's a lot of different jitters here. Jitter means randomizer. So size jitter, spacing jitter, angle jitter, all of these perform the same basic function to add some randomness to the lines that you're creating. Let's go back to our watercolor brush, to the liner, and let's bring this size way down. Let's put our spacing at about 66 to demonstrate this. So I'm going to drag to the right, increase the spacing jitter, increase the spacing jitter more, and all the way over you can see that it jumps quite a bit. Let's bring that to zero, 
you notice that the spacing jitter is on a horizontal plane, scatter is on a vertical plane, and there's a higher number than 100 here. You can go all the way up to 200. You can see this is great for bokeh or snowflakes or different things. All right, let's bring this back to zero. All right, let's look at opacity here. To the left, this is the multiplier. And this can go one to 100. And to the right is the brush opacity. So let's do a quick demonstration. We have the opacity set at 100 right here. Let's bring this down to roughly 50 and down to 24. Let's bring this up to 2. Bring this up to 50. Bring this up to 100. You can see that we've hit an opacity of 100 when we were at 2 and we were at 50. Using the brush opacity versus the multiplier is going to give you a cleaner stroke. This is going to be cleaner. This is going to be a little more grainy and you can introduce some grain into the brush this way as well. Size jitter is going to add some randomness to the size of the shape and grain. Angle, we're gonna switch over to our arrow brush. The angle, as we adjust this, is going to adjust the angle of the brush the entire time. Angle jitter is going to give, again, some randomness to the angle. Now, rotation has some properties here in preferences, so we're going to go to preferences. We have the option of always use pen tilt rotation instead of follow trajectory in Brush Creator. I have this turned on and I'm going to leave it on for this because we have a force rotation mode lock button. All right, so let's go up here and to demonstrate this, we're going to choose our arrow. We have only one image, so this should stay nice and clean. With it locked, this will make sure that it doesn't use that setting in preference that says use pen tilt or rotation all the time. Now follow trajectory is going to follow the path that my brush takes. That's a lot of fun. Pen tilt is going to be based off of the angle that I have the brush on the screen. And you can see the cursor, it has this circle with the line in it. And that is showing us the angle of tilt. Pen rotation, this is only available on, uh, I believe just some Wacom devices where pen uh, barrel rotation, this twisting of the stylus will twist the shape. It'll rotate the shape of the brush head using pen rotation. If you select pen rotation and it doesn't exist on your system, it will automatically move to pen tilt and you'll have that option available there. This right here is shape border. Shape border, you have different images you can choose. These images will go into the center here. This will adjust where they are placed. So this will be towards the top, about 50% up and this would be at the bottom. So a hundred is all the way at the bottom. So it's 50% below. So half the image is at the top, half is the image is at the bottom. Okay, I think that should make sense. Okay, let's go ahead and reset this. So we have our regular image. Start, mid, and end. This is for where it is in the stroke, whether it's on the start or at the end of the stroke as the stroke wraps around. You see, we don't see anything here. We turn this back on. And again, we see very little because these are disabled. So this is just the start the whole time as we wrap around is going from edge to edge. Let's turn on tilt and do that same thing again. 
And you can see that the stroke now has a front and a back, not just a path. And so the placement here of these along that path bring this down further. You're going to see this line right here is transitioning. This is the mid. This is the start. This is the, the end. So let's do that again. So you notice there's a front and a back. So let's bring this down and let's bring so you can see both the start and the end right here. Now this is the middle. So if we bring this down here during the transition right here, you're going to see this wrapping the corners. Okay, so let's bring these back. And you're going to see you have this nice shape border that goes around with the curve as you use pen tilt and gives you a front and a back, uh, something fun to play around with. Uh, pressure, this is going to be what happens with light pressure. This is going to be what happens with heavy pressure. If you bring this up, then even with light pressure, you're gonna get this thick line. If you bring this down, then with light pressure, it's going to stay uh, relatively uh, inactive. So again, with heavy pressure and light pressure. All right, you guys, that's shape border. All right, for tip tilt, we're going to go here to a pencil. I have pen tilt two. This is my personal brush. I have pen tilt turned on and I have a curve editor. We're going to reset this right here. And when these both the height and width are the same. This is the size right here. This is the angle, the amount of tilt. Perpendicular, this one is parallel. Perpendicular means that it is pointing, the pen is pointing straight up. Parallel means it's tilted very close to flush with the screen. So very, very tilted. Okay, so here, if this is the same, then my circle is going to be even. That brush shape, this brush shape right here is not going to change its aspect. It's not going to tilt or lean. Now, if I bring this side up, so width up, you can see as I draw to the side, the width is going to be much higher. If I bring this down, width is going to be much smaller. If I bring the height up, you're gonna see exactly the opposite. So to keep these even is going to allow you to draw nice shapes with the pen tilted more perpendicular and tilted shapes when you bring it to the side. So let's go ahead, we're gonna bring this down, we're gonna bring this down so you can get an idea for how this looks. And let's go ahead and clear the layer. So here I have the height set here, so as I tilt more, the height is going to grow, the width is going to stay the same here. So as I draw a circle and the pen is perpendicular, it has a nice uniform thickness, the shape stays the same. As I tilt the stylus here, you can see I can get this nice tilted shape for shading as I bring the stylus closer, the back of the stylus closer to the screen. Precise tip tilt is going to constrain this And if you have a lot of tilt, this is going to tighten and pull everything in closer together. It's going to make it more precise. All right, for this last part, we're going to go to oils and acrylics, max loading and max smudge. For max loading and max smudge, we're going to use Filbert Soft. This is in oils and acrylics, and I'm going to push here to the side, you can see that we've got some nice impasto depth. If I change the max loading and bring it lower, and let's bring it lower, you 
you're going to see we're going to get a very flat paint. Even if this loading is set to 100 right here, it's going to be controlled by the maximum right here. And again, in visual settings, we have impostal depth strength. So that's going to affect all these things on a software level. This is going to be on a brush level. And we're going to bring this back up to 100. Max smudge. Let's go ahead and delete the layer. Let's put max smudge at zero and bring this over to 100 and bring this over to 200. And you can see it gets more oily and smudgy and gooey. This controls the oiliness property. And again, this is a limiter. This is the maximum allowed, and this will adjust. All right, and the last one we have here is image sequence. Let's go back to our watercolor brushes. We're gonna look at our liner that we created. This has four images. If you watch the video on this, you're gonna see texture order. When this is sequential or random, image sequence is going to be turned off. When we choose either pen pressure or pen tilt, image sequence is going to be turned on. This right here, this first one, second one, third one, and fourth one, coincide with one, two, three, four. If we create a gap, then during this gap is going to blend. You can see right here, it's blended those two images. If we don't want any blending, then bring those gaps together. And here we have texture order sorted by pen pressure, which means lighter pressure is going to be here on the left and heavier pressure on the right. And with pen tilt, this is going to be to the right and to the left. Stylus moving from left to right or reverse of that, depending on your device. All right, you guys, that's everything in the shape section. If you have questions, put it in the comment section. In the next video, we're going to be talking about all the different grain properties. And in our last video, we're going to be talking about canvas. And again, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.